Welcome everyone. Today I wanted to talk about two test nets that were recently released on the Cardano ecosystem, the Cardano platform. And I wanted to try to simplify it in the quickest and most succinct way possible. I am not approaching this from a coding based background. I'm approaching this from a theoretical type of overview of what these test nets actually accomplish. So, you know, you've heard the KEVM testnet being released and you've heard the Yella testnet being released. And both of these testnets are very significant in my opinion and it really shows the extent into which Cardano is planning to become this next generation cryptocurrency. So I'm going to try to, um, try to break this down in the simplest way possible that I understand. So let's start off with the KEVM testnet. So the KEVM testnet, it basically stands for um, the KEVM letters. K represents the K framework and EVM represents the Ethereum virtual machine. So what does that mean? So if you take on a project like Ethereum, um, they run smart contracts. If you go on CoinMarketCap right now, you see all those ERC20 tokens. Most of them are running on Ethereum. All these contracts, they need to be written in a programming language called Solidity. It's a very specific language for Ethereum. So the issue with Ethereum-based contracts now is that there are certain flaws that can happen in the code, which lead to failed contracts or um, just contracts not performing that the way that they're supposed to. They can lead to security breaches and lots of vulnerabilities with inside the code. So Cardano built the entire Ethereum virtual machine, but added the K framework on top of the Ethereum virtual machine. So basically that means that an Ethereum based project or an ERC20 token could come within the Cardano ecosystem, use the KEVM, where well, right now it's a test net, but once it hits the main net, they could use KEVM and run their Ethereum based contracts while using the K framework to verify the veracity of the code and the authenticity of the code so you don't deploy your project and run into issues where um, the contract fails or it's not performing the way it's supposed to or it's there are security breaches as far as monetary breaches and things that could really go wrong and really mess up your project and there have been those situations in ethereum several times so Cardano, of course, they built this entire framework just so Ethereum projects could come and use the correct system and help them create their secure, um, their secure smart contract. So that's the KEVM testnet. The other testnet is the Yellow testnet. So that's the IELE. And the Yellow testnet is the proprietary virtual machine that Cardano has created for the Cardano ecosystem. So if you see the Ethereum based projects and you say, oh, this is an ERC20 token, but projects that are building what's inside the Cardano ecosystem are going to be using the yellow, well, as soon as it goes from testnet to mainnet, but people are using it right now as we speak in the testnet phase. So this is the way to build smart contracts with inside the Cardano ecosystem. And it's far superior to the Ethereum virtual machine. So it is has improved in all virtual machines previous to its, its launch. And it is going to be the best smart con contract deployer that is that has been released to date. So companies are gonna be able to move in and if you have your smart contracts that you're trying to deploy, they're gonna be able to build their smart contracts within Yella. So Yella uses a um, compiler. It's called the LLVM compiler. And what is a compiler? It's basically a way for languages to be ported to another language. So they can start at one language and then end up at a different language. So it really allows multiple languages to be written to create the smart contracts. Within Ethereum, you can only write contracts in that Ethereum specific language, which is Solidity. So you need a developer to create the language, um, to be able to create code in Solidity in order to create a project or create a smart contract. But when, you, when you're dealing with LLVM, people are going to be able to write 
in one language and it's going to be transcribed into another. So it's going to be compatible with Haskell. It's going to be compatible with Ruby. It's going to be compatible with Python and C++ and all the other programming languages that exist out there. So it's really going to allow, decrease the barrier to entry. So let's say that not everyone is, um, not everyone is a master in Haskell or these highly specific programming languages. There are a lot of developers around the world and they need to write in their Pacific language that they're already comfortable writing in. They're going to be able to use Yella and whatever the programming language may be, it's going to be able to compile these languages and transcribe it to the language that the actual Yella uses in order to run smart contracts. So the barrier to entry is decreasing significantly. And these two test nets launched simultaneously are so important because it really shows you how genuine Cardano is in trying to really improve the system. Not only did they create their own proprietary virtual machine to write languages on, they are also, they also created the Ethereum virtual machine, recreated it and made it better. They made it better so people don't lose funds. People are not compromised. I mean, what other project does that? And I also think that this is a brilliant marketing strategy. There are going to be ERC-20 projects. There are going to be smart contracts that are written with inside Ethereum that maybe need a little bit more. Um, they need that last, they need the K framework to audit their smart contracts before deploying people's funds. And they're going to be using this within the Cardano ecosystem. They're going to see how modular and clean it is. And then they're going to tell them, they're, they might go back to their team and say, oh, wow, you know, what else can Cardano do? Maybe we should just build our program straight into Yella or using Yella. Maybe we should just build straight into the Cardano ecosystem. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to mention before I forget is Yella also solves this issue of, um, of gas. Um, in Ethereum, when you're running smart contracts, you need gas in order to run that smart contract. Gas is the fee that the contracts need to pay in order for funds to be sent and the system to work. Like I said before, nothing in crypto, nothing in life is free. You, you need to pay a tax in order to run a, um, a smart contract or whatever you are running. You need to make it pay the tax, just like you need, um, you need gas to run your car, you need gas to run your contract. The problem with gas is sometimes it's, it's opaque as to how much gas does an Ethereum-based contract really need? You're always self-calculating it, or you need to, or you're spending too much gas to send funds, and these kind of things are very important, especially when we're we're dealing with big money. If big money is coming in, they need to know what they're spending, and they need to cut off all the excess. They don't need to be overpaying for anything. So Yella solves that gas issue. It's automatically calculated how much gas you use, and you only use the amount of gas that you that you spend. So, you know, if your smart contract deploys and you 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 end up fulfilling less contracts than you initially thought, then you will pay for the gas that you use, which is extremely important. Coming from a business background, you need to have accountability for your expenditures. So this is amazing. So I think that this is. This is, this is just a great news. And I, these are the two things, these are the two test nets that you need to be familiar with. You don't need to know the code. Just know that Cardano is coming. Okay, whether you like it or not, Cardano is coming. They're, they're really creating the next generation of smart contract deployment. And don't be surprised if a lot of contracts, a lot of companies start using Cardano as opposed to Ethereum. Or you may look in a year and even Ethereum-based contracts, everyone's going to be using the Cardano backbone to, to run their, their Ethereum-based contracts under the KEVM. We're going to have so many people, and we can handle it all. We can, we can bring all of them within the system. CryptoKitties is not going to crash our system. Things are going to be running in epics. Epics get full. Um, it's going to be running in multiple different epics. The TPS is going to be great. Everything is going to ro grow off without a hitch. And I'm, I'm just very excited. I'm very excited. And the, I mean, as a business person, for a project to acknowledge the, um, 
to acknowledge what another project has done. I mean, they didn't have to go out of their way to rebuild the Ethereum virtual machine from scratch. They did that, and that's what sets them apart. They didn't have to do it, but they did it because they truly want to make the cryptocurrency space better. And it's, it's honestly brilliant because people are just going to be coming in, just wanting to learn more. One of the other things that I wanted to, um, to inform you is, um, I, I know I've spoken about this in a previous video, but Traxia, the first investment by Emergo, actually is supposed to be the first project that's going to be ported as a ERC-20 token onto Cardano. So it would have been released as a Cardano, um, it would have been released in Cardano if the, 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 the test nets were, were live, if there were main nets, but they had to, they launched um, this year. So they are an ERC-20 token, but they're going to be the blueprint of how to transform yourself from an ERC-20 token to a Cardano token. We don't know what they're called yet. We don't know the naming standard or the nomenclature, but it's going to be very interesting in documenting this and showing the ease of what is happening behind the scenes is going to encourage a lot of these projects to follow suit, especially when they see that you know they don't have to wait um, eons if, if, the, if the network is delayed or it's clogged up. There's not going to be any of that. Comforting to see this. Really, really comfort, comforting. So what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts of the KEVM? What are your thoughts of the yellow test net? What do you think this can do for the future of Cardano? Do you think that um, do you think that a lot of ERC twenty tokens are going to port on over to Cardano? Um, what What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? And it, it's just very interesting to see how all of this is going to turn out. This is literally blockchain three and it seems that you know I've, I I get this question sometimes like. Is there going to be a blockchain 4.0? Um, I, 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 don't, I don't think so. Because when you have a company like Cardano that builds upon the successes of other companies and continuously evolves and will include features from other projects into their project just to make it better, you're really building like the, the most custom, the most custom blockchain out there. So... If there are better features out there, you better believe that Cardano is going to add to them, add them to their platform, add them to their ecosystem. So this network is just going to become more robust, more secure, and it is the future. So once again, Cardano is coming. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And until the next video, thank you.